In this video, I will be teaching you how to sketch the graph of cubic polynomials. So when we're drawing the graph of cubic polynomials, we don't necessarily have to have an exact graph. So what we'll have as our final product will be a kind of rough sketch. So there are two main things that we need to know when we're drawing the graphs. We need to know the intersection points and the rough shape. So the intersection points refer to the points where our graph intersects with both the x and the y axes. And the rough shape of the graph refers to, well, the rough shape. So if you remember when we did quadratic equations, our graphs either looked like this or like this. With cubic expressions, our graphs will either look like this or like this. So when we're referring to the rough shape, we're referring to whether our graph will be in this shape or in this shape. So let's look at an example. And it's already been factorized for us, so that makes it much more simple. Let's say that we have x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 1 times x minus 3 is equal to y. And we need to sketch the graph for this. So let's start up by drawing our axes. Here we have y. And here we have x. So as I mentioned above, the first point, or the first thing that we need to know, are the intersection points. Where does our graph cross the different axes? So it crosses the x-axis, where y is equal to 0. So when y is equal to 0, then either x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. That's one point. x plus 1 is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 1. That's our second point. Or x minus 3 is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. So that is our third point. So you can sketch this on our graph. 1, 2, 3. So we have the point 2 and 3. So 1, 2, 3 and then at negative 1 as well. And our y-intercept happens when x is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0 then we have, let's see, then y is equal to negative 2 times 1 times negative 3. And this gives us a value of 6. So our y-intercept will be at the point y is equal to 6. So now that we have the intercepts, all we really need to do is to connect the dots and to find out which shape our graph follows. So will it follow this shape or this shape? Well, looking at the way our graphs align or our dots align, it'll be going from negative 1 all the way up to 6 and then back down to 2 and then it'll go back up to 3. So it's a bit better and then back up to 3. So our graph will follow the first shape over here. And that's about it. We just have to, so we have the intersection points and the rough shape of our graph. So let's look at another example. In this example, which is also factorized, it says that 2x minus 1 multiplied by 2 minus x times x plus 1 is equal to y. And we have to sketch this as well. So let's say we have our axes. Yikes. Here's our y axis and our x axis. And once again, we need to find our points of intersection. So it intersects the x axis where y is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Either 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, which gives us x is equal to 1 over 2. 1 point, 2 minus x is equal to 0. Here we get x is equal to 2, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, and therefore x is equal to negative 1. So these are our three points of intercept with the x-axis. So let's draw this out. We have the point x is equal to 1 over 2, which is about here. The point x is equal to 2, which is right here and the point x is equal to negative 1. So this can be 1, this can be 2, this is negative 1. 
So we have the point x is equal to 1 over 2, which is right here. The point x is equal to 2, which is right here. And the point x is equal to negative 1. So next up, we want to find our y-intercepts. So that's when x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0. Then y will be equal to negative 1 times 2 times 1. And from this we get that y is equal to negative 2. Negative 1, negative 2. And this right here is our y-intercept. So now once again all we need to do is connect the dots and see what shape our graph forms. So it goes from negative 1 to the y-intercept at negative 2. So like that, something like that, and then it goes to the point 1 over 2 and then it goes back down to the point two. So looking back at the possible shapes, it fits this shape over here. And at this point, you're probably wondering, well, how do we determine whether our graph will look like this shape or this shape before we actually plot out the points? Well, if we look at this graph, or the first graph that we drew, it follows the shape that looks something like this. And it really all depends on the coefficient of x cubed. So it depends on the coefficient of x cubed. And in this case, the coefficient of x cubed will be positive because this x is positive, this x is positive, and this x is positive. So because of that, our final answer, our final coefficient for x cubed will be positive. Therefore, it follows this shape. So we can write that up here. So when the coefficient, that's not how you spell it, but of x cubed is positive, then we will have this shape right here. Now let's look at our other graph. In this case, our graph follows the shape like this. So it's kind of inverse to what we saw above. And in this case, the coefficient of x cubed happens to be negative. And that's because, well, this is positive, this x is negative, and this x is positive. And if you have positive times negative times positive, that gives us a negative answer. So over here, the, the coefficient of x cubed is negative. So this shape happens when the coefficient is negative. And let's make their own boxes. OK, so now that we know this, let's say that we have an equation or an expression. y is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1, or in other words, x minus 1 whole squared multiplied by x plus 1. So we start again by drawing our axis, axes. So y and x. And then we want to find the different points of intersection. So the y-intercepts occur or the x-intercepts, I'm sorry, the x-intercepts occur when y is equal to 0. Therefore, we get x minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, that's one point, x minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1 again, that's the same point, and x plus 1 is equal to 0, therefore x is equal to negative 1. What's different in this case is that we have the same x-intercept twice. So the point x is equal to 1 occurs twice. So we only have two x-intercepts versus up here where we had 3 and up here where we also had 3. So we'll see how that looks when we graph it. So let's say that this is 1. We have a point here and this is negative 1. We have a point here. Next let's find our y-intercept. So the y-intercept occurs where x is equal to 0, 
So we get y is equal to negative 1 times negative 1 times 1, which gives us a value of y is equal to 1. So therefore, our y-intercept will be right over here. Also notice how in this case, we're not simply able to just plot the points and tell exactly what our graph will look like because we're not able to tell what the rough shape of the curve will be. So now what we have to do is we have to look at the coefficient of x cubed. So if we look and see this x is positive, this x is positive, and this x is also positive, therefore the coefficient of x cubed is positive. Therefore our graph will have the shape, as I mentioned above, like this. So how does that work? So firstly we have our normal intercept or x is equal to negative 1 which only occurs once. So our graph passes through this and then goes through the y-intercept and now what happens at the point x equals to 1 is you'll see that our graph simply bounces off of it. That means that it passes through the point but it never goes beyond it so it never goes beneath it. So once again because our or because this intercept happened twice, or because it was squared in our equation, the graph doesn't go beyond it. It simply just passes through that point and deflects back up from there. And this rule is true whenever you have any square function or any double root inside of your equation.